A and B play a game where each take turn in rolling a fair dice with numbers 1 to 6 on its face. The game ends whenever a 6 is rolled first and the person rolling a 6 first wins the game. If A gets the first turn in rolling the dice, what is the probability A wins the game? Let's start by representing the event A rolls a 6 at any one turn e by A and similarly the probability, sorry, the event that, that B rolls a 6 uh, by the notation B. So the probability of the event A happening is equal to the probability of event B happening is equal to 1 by 6 because the dice is a fair dice. So all the six numbers on the dice are equally probable at uh, any one roll. So, so the chance of, of the number 6 appearing is 1 by 6. So what are the, co what are the probabilities, the complements of those events? So what are the probabilities of A not rolling a 6 at one turn? So that's the five other outcomes which are equally probable. So that would be like five by six. And similarly, the probability of B not rolling a die, rolling six at uh, any one of his turns would be equal to five by six. So now A gets the first turn in rolling the dice and we have to consider the different uh, scenarios turn by turn in which a gets to win the game. Well, since A takes the first turn, he can win at his very first turn if he rolls a 6. And in that case, B doesn't even get to roll a dice. So, this would happen if the event A happens. Remember, we denoted the event A as the event that A rolls a 6. So, if the event A happens at the very first turn that A takes, then A will win at his first turn, and the probability of that happening is uh, simply 1 by 6. Now, the second scenario that we consider is A wins at his second turn. Now, what are the sequence of events that has to happen if A wins at his second turn. Well, A has to not win at his first turn, meaning A has to not rule up 6 at his first turn. So that's A complement. B has to not rule a 6 at his first turn, so that B doesn't win at his first turn. So that's B complement. And then the event A has to happen at A's second turn, right? So the sequence of events in that particular case for, for the turns would be A complement, B complement, A. And the probability of this would be 5 by 6 for A complement multiplied by 5 by 6 for B complement uh, multiplied by 1 by 6 for A. And this will be equal to 5 by 6 whole square multiplied by 1 by 6. Now, next consider what happens if A wins at his third turn. And in that case, again, the sequence of events has to be A complement B, A complement B, then A. And again, if we evaluate the probability, that would come to 5 by 6 whole to the power 4 multiplied by 1 by 6. So if you want to generalize what's the probability that A wins at his nth turn. So for that, for the previous n minus 1 turns, A and B has to not roll a 6 for each of those n minus 1 turns. So this will be represented by A complement, B complement, whole to the power n minus 1, uh, and then the event A occurs at A's nth turn, meaning A rolls a 6 at his nth turn. So the probability of this would be 
5 by 6 multiplied by 5 by 6 raised to the power n minus 1 multiplied by 1 by 6. So now in order to get the probability that A wins the game, we have to really sum up the probabilities of all such possible scenario. And the question is, I mean, how much will n go up to? So we know we have started considering from the first turn, then we look to the second turn, third turn. Now we have generalized it, found the pro probability of A winning at the nth turn, but how far will n go? Well, in this case, theoretically, n can go up to infinity. And basically, we evaluate when we start summing up these probabilities, uh, we see this pattern. So, so 1 by 6 plus 5 by 6 whole square multiplied by 1 by 6 plus 5 by 6 whole to the power 4 one in, multiplied by 1 by 6 and so on. And, and this is a infinite series that we have to evaluate in order to find the probability that A wins. Now, if we take 1 by 6 common, then uh, inside the parenthesis, we are left with 1 plus 5 by 6 whole square plus 5 by 6 whole to the power 4, and, and, and that goes on till infinity. And what we see essentially is uh, this is a infinite GP series with the first term 1 and a common ratio of 5 by 6 whole square. And uh, just to revise a little bit from our lessons on infinite GP series, um, the sum of infinite GP series with first term A and a common ratio of R that goes like A plus AR plus AR square would be simply the first term divided by 1 minus R provided R lies between 0 to 1. So that's the only uh, you know, set of values of R for which this, this series will uh, converge. So R has to be a fraction, so it has to be a fraction lying between 0 and 1. So in this case, it's an infinite GP series, common ratio is 1, and, oh, sorry, the first term is 1, and the common ratio is 5 by 6 whole square, which is clearly a, a fraction, right, between 0 and 1. So this infinite GP series will be 1 by 6 multiplied by 1 over 1 minus 25 by 36. So that's the common ratio 5 by 6 whole square, uh, which comes to 25 by 36. And if we do the, the evaluation and simplification of this fraction, uh, the probability comes as 6 by 11. So we note here that probability of A winning is actually, you know, better than 50%. And that's kind of, you know, uh, makes sense because A gets his turn first. So there is a scenario that, that A can win even uh, without B rolling uh, the dice, which kind of puts um, B at a little bit more odds than A. Uh, so, so that's why A has got a little bit more than 50% chance of winning. So 6 by 12 will be 50%, right, half. But 6 by 11 is a little bit more than uh, 50%. So that's, the, you know, the probability. And we get the answer by considering the probabilities of, the, of, of uh, you know, the different cases of A winning at different turns and then summing them up together. But the interesting thing here is that sum runs up to infinity. And we also take the help of, uh, you know, a result from infinite GP series. So that's how we do the problem.